Hey everyone, welcome back to the Container Barn Build Series here on our channel and in this week we're building these awesome giant barn doors for the end of the container. We'd like to thank Xsense for sponsoring this week's video and if you're anything like us and have a garage workshop or do projects around your house all the time, you might be a little concerned about the potential for a fire starting. And that's why when Molly and I moved into this house, we loaded the house down with smart fire alarms. That way we would get notified immediately if there was any carbon monoxide or smoke detected. And we actually bought Xsense products when we moved into this house because they were the best thing we could find at an affordable price on the market. And today we're sharing with you actually a very cool device. This is their smart smoke and CO2 alarm listener with voice alerts and base station kit, which long-winded way to say, this makes your dumb old fire alarms turn into smart fire alarms without having to spend a lot of money on replacing all of them. Install couldn't be any easier. All you have to do is screw in the provided base plate within two to six inches of your existing alarm, screw in their actual listening device, and then plug in the base station and connect the two to their awesome app that Molly and I use with all of our Xsense products already. So anytime that old fire alarm goes off now, the listener will hear it and it's gonna send a notification directly to your phone through their app. And best of all, there is no subscription fees or hidden fees at all. You just set it up once, pay one time, and you're good to go. So if you guys would like to better protect your home or shop, be sure to check the links in the description below. We have a 25% off coupon right now for this kit using the link in the description. And be sure to check out Clickety Clack. Also be sure to check out their water leak detectors and plenty of their other sensors that can help protect your home or shop. Links in the description. Let's get into the video. Guys, I wanna show you how good our insulation is working. This is absolutely awesome. Out here, we are at 9502. Look at that. 102 exterior temp. Mm -hmm. Walking through. It is frigid in here. <laughs> like, it is very cold in here. All right, here we go. 59 degrees. Like, dang. <laughs> that is a 40 plus degree difference. That is absolutely insane. The time has finally come, guys. We are tackling the doors this week. And so many of y'all have commented, what's our plans with these doors? And it's gone back and forth a lot of different times, but we're just gonna dive head first into it. We have some pretty cool ideas and we're just gonna see how well they work and how it turns out. First thing we're doing is we're getting rid of the existing latches. And that just gives this thing that whole container look. So we're getting rid of those. We're probably gonna have to weld up the holes that are left behind from the bolts or put the bolts. We could just put the bolts back through and just leave the bolts attached instead of having to weld them. Well, if we're putting wood over it, then maybe. If, so we're also thinking about <laughs> putting wood over this. We're gonna play around with that and see what it looks like. And we're also playing around with the idea of adding in a window, a long narrow window across the top of the doors. Now there's a lot that has to happen to, to make all of that work. So let's just dive right in and see how this week goes working on these doors. Molly's favorite thing is opening these doors. These doors are horrible <laughs> and I'm so glad to get rid of them. It's not as bad opening you it. You gotta lift them up, Molly. I know as it is closing it. <laughs> this one? Yep. All right, now I just need to find whatever size bolt that is and start taking those off. What's your guess? You're always, you always guess right. Uh, You're not even filming yeah. anything. Yeah, I am, I'm filming the bolt. Okay. I say that is a 9 16 or 5 8 5 8 Come on, come on. Oh no, it's one size bigger. Mm. It's 11 16 too bad I came with 11 sixteenths. Perfect. Oh man, these things are real covered in paint. Paint. Shoot. Gonna need the ladder, brother.
So if we want these to work like regular doors and we're getting rid of those big compression latches, we have to get rid of the seals that go on the inside as well. So I tried to trim the seals down as best as I could in order to still maintain some seal but not get a full compression seal so that the door actually closes and shuts. And although, yes, it won't be as airtight as it was, it certainly won't be good for traveling across oceans and getting seawater all over it. But it's absolutely going to be good for uh, some rain potentially hitting and coming down. Also, if rain ever gets in here, because of the way this shipping container is designed, this is sloped. So even if it gets in, it's going to run down and come out again. So it's kind of like, I'm not going to try to go over the top about making sure these things are 100% sealed. It'll actually be nice to have this thing passively vent a little bit. Probably going to have to add a fan in that regard too, but we've got this door shutting now and I know that this is going to work. So let's move on and get the other one all completely undone and then we'll figure out how we're going to dress them up and make them look nice. Well, before we can actually start building our doors, we need to get some lumber because we have ran out of the stuff that we originally milled for the container. So let's get everything ready, head back to the mill and start milling some lumber. Molly's actually out this morning getting coffee with a friend and I decided to take it extra slow this morning. Thought I would bring out cast iron pan and actually cook up some breakfast out here over a fire. You know, I think it's super important that we slow down a little bit in life sometimes and enjoy the, you know, smaller, finer things. Also wanted to talk to you guys about a lot of the comments that y'all have been leaving in, in the prior videos and, and how much 
Mo and I both genuinely appreciate them. A lot of people have been leaving comments uh, saying things like, uh, glad to see a young couple out there working and uh, doing stuff together. Also things like, um, it's nice to see genuine down to earth people and th those sorts of so those sorts of comments. And it means a lot to Molly and I because although we make videos for a living and uh, build these projects and things like that, our personalities are pretty introverted actually. And we're not like big social people um, outside of the internet, which is obviously sort of a, a, a funny a funny thing. But and it does mean a lot to hear that because as a content creator, you're constantly surrounded by people who are being over the top or uh, lavish or doing um, things with that cost a lot of money or you know, they're constantly doing a lot of things that are for people like us really difficult to keep up with and Ma and I have struggled over the years with like that idea that um, you know maybe that we're more introverted people that um, that would limit us or or hurt us in some way and I know that's a pretty silly thing to say and one that sort of seems obvious from an outsider's perspective but uh, you know, anytime we see a dip in business or, or things get tough or anything like that, you know, a lot of those sort of negative things come up and it's really nice to hear from you guys saying stuff like that. And I just wanted to say that Molly and I both really appreciate that y'all appreciate who we really are because we aren't trying to be something that we aren't on this channel. It, honestly, that is just exhausting and way too difficult for Molly and I to ever even attempt to to be something that, that we're not. And it really encourages both of us to be even more genuine because I think a lot of times on social media, a lot of people, including us, tend to mask over certain things to um, make things seem easier or uh, more desirable or anything along those lines. And a lot of times for us, it's like avoiding, oh, that's lovely, I'm getting a, uh, tree stuff in my bacon and those sorts of comments really help molly and i sort of solidify how important it is for us to speak our minds and, and talk about things that are maybe difficult topics or or things that uh might would offend people or you know but th they're things that we believe in like we have never really talked about our faith here on this channel but molly and i are both uh christians and we believe in creating a, a really solid foundation in our lives through Christ and, and giving all the glory to God for, for everything that, that we have. And that's just not something that we normally talk about in here because we're trying to keep it, you know, like, well, it seems ridiculous even saying that now. But uh, it's just something that when you do this for a business, you don't want to say anything that could be like controversial or whatever. But I'm kind of over that, if I'm being honest with you. I'm kind of ready to uh, maybe not open up the floodgates, but just sort of say what we mean more often. Our society, unfortunately, tends to try and crucify anyone who says what they believe. And, uh, well, Molly and I are strong people and, and um, kind of tired of letting anyone dictate what I say as, as someone who believes heavily in freedom of speech in, in every way possible. But yeah, I just, you know, without going down a crazy rabbit hole here, I'm going to finish up my breakfast here. I just wanted to say that we really appreciate those comments. It, it really encourages us to even be more authentic or, or show you more of the things that we really care about and that mean a lot to us. Voila, a little bit of breakfast. And yes, the bacon is extra crispy today. <laughs> Not because I meant to. Hey-o! Look 
Look who's here. Good morning. You uh, ready to get to milling? Look at you. Met your fire. Oh, I cooked breakfast out here and everything. No, you didn't. Yeah. I got ready. a log picked out and everything. Let's do it. Okay. Everybody keeps saying they want to see you doing the work, not helping. So, uh, <laughs> on the tractor. I am not good at finessing. Yeah, we're going to learn today. We're going to get learnt. Get learnt. Come on. Kidding me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Molly gets to be the first one to try out our fancy new uh, power head unit for our woodland mill sawmill. This is just an electric way to let it up and down instead of having to hand crank it. Because let me tell you, that's a workout after after a while. So. We got the DRO that we put on in one of our prior videos, which just uh, lets us see where the blade height is. And we got this to raise it up and down now. So this should go somewhat quickly, or maybe a little faster than normal. Hopefully. All right, Surely. sister, zip off the top. See if you can roll her over. <laughs> Readjust and do it again. No problem. This isn't going good. Hurt my hand. And uh, something that I thought and hoped would never happen just happened. And we just threw a blade. And now it is jammed back in here. Yeah. Watch out, it's gonna go towards you.
I gotta say y'all, many people comment like how, how do you work with your significant other? How do you get your wife to come work with you? Well, I would say the golden answer there is, is when stuff like this happens and stuff breaks and all that stuff, you can't just flip out. And uh, I'm not saying I'm perfect about that, but you gotta be really patient or else they're not gonna wanna hang out with you or do anything with you. So if you're constantly losing your coal and making it a non-enjoyable process, then how could you expect your wife or kids or anybody to wanna hang out with you? So uh, I know many of us can be that way when stuff's frustrating and whatnot, because this is certainly a frustrating thing, tinkering with it, having to get it just right, and there's a lot of variables and stuff. You just gotta be patient. Didn't mean to. I know. I know you didn't mean to, but you were using it, you know? That's the thing. So there's that connotation. You were using it, right? But that's what I'm saying. It's not, you didn't do anything. That would have happened if I was using it. So you gotta be patient. <laughs> not make a big deal out of it. What I'm talking about though, the, the angle piece. Yeah. Like it's like the barn one. Right. I feel like they should be this size if they did on here. Yeah, that's what I would do. Because those are three inches, so a four inch board would cover that perfectly. Mm -hmm.
this. Sucker open, you ready? Better than us. That was good. Alright, Molly. Let's close it up, one door on. Let's see what we think. Actually, we should look at the other door closed next to it. Wow. That looks good. I mean, Molly, after all of this work, we could have just framed the whole building. I mean, we covered the whole shipping container, took the Gosh, hard, darn it. took the hardware off of there. We could have built the whole thing for two thousand dollars if we just wanted. We we could have used two thousand dollars. Yeah, we yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, we could have spent a fraction of what we spent to do mm -hmm. this. To build a whole building, I, I swear to you. I would love to see your yeah. spreadsheet of. I mean, we wouldn't you know, actually down. we wouldn't actually use concrete. We'd use like clay, you know. It'd be more of a, I don't <laughs> oh, know, like the holistic floor. floor, for instance. Okay? Holistic. Holistic floor. Yeah. Natural. I'm over that comment. I'm over here in that comment. I really am. Let me tell you, if we have a hurricane, I'm going in there. You know, I'd rather be in there than the house. We didn't buy this container to do this project. We bought this container for storage a long time ago, and now we're reusing it for something. So it wasn't like we were like, oh, let's buy a container and then like completely wrap the thing in wood. However, wouldn't it be cheaper than building the same size building? Part, cost per square foot would not be cheaper. <laughs> I guarantee you, because I did the math after all those comments. The cost per square foot on this building, the container alone, cost per square foot is the same as what it would cost to have someone pour the concrete for you for a building. Just the concrete. Just the concrete. Well, it's been a successful day. Molly and I are cutting it short because my niece has a soccer game today. So we're going to go put everything away on the sawmill. Looks like it's going to rain, unfortunately. And hopefully we can get out here and get this other door done tomorrow in between rain showers and things but uh next time you see us i don't know when it'll be but we'll get this second door done it'll be in the second for it'll them. Be in, yeah it'll be in literally right now well we didn't beat the rain this morning but the rain isn't gonna isn't gonna hold us back we got our little tent up which uh, doesn't actually help us install it but it helps us keep the camera dry so the priorities yep. huh? About to go grab the door, hopefully set it in place, and hopefully it just goes in there right away and we don't have to make many changes. And if it does, Molly, we can Screw call it. it a day. <laughs> Screw it in and call it a day until the rain stops at least. Hey, it looks... That looks pretty good to me. Please like right me. there. That looks good right wow. there. Oh, go, go. Now the gap isn't absolutely perfect, but we're probably gonna put a strip down the middle anyway to cover that gap, so. Works for me. Okay, questions for you guys. Leave comments down below and let us know what you think. So up here at the top, we have the option of potentially cutting in some sort of window situation, making up our own windows. Molly and I are up in the air about that. We're not really sure. We like the way they look right now, but that could be a cool addition to it. As well as we're not sure if we should have a strip down the middle, I don't think it needs it from a weatherproofing standpoint, but it might look good. And then 
Should it have handles out here? Probably. Should it have a way to unlock it from out here? I don't know. We still have to figure out how we're gonna latch them down on the inside and have them be pulled tight to the inside. But I was just always sort of thinking that it would be something that you open these doors when you need them from the inside. But comment down below this video and let us know how we could go about creating a locking system for this and whether or not you think we should put a window in it. These doors turned out amazing and this whole container project is looking so good so far. So that's going to do it for this week's video. We hope you guys enjoyed and we will see you in the next one. Peace.